working with Andrew Lloyd Webber is always very pressured because um, certainly he's you know the most successful living composer in, uh, around, and uh, you know to have a man who can have five shows running on Broadway at the same time and you know you're in a room and he's at the piano is sort of <laughs> it's a lot of pressure. <laughs> um, I first worked with Andrew on uh, a show he wrote called Aspects of Love and I was in the original Canadian production of that which was a new production different from the one that had been done in London and Broadway with a new director um, and Andrew was very much involved with that and wanted to see the piece brought to a new life. He felt it hadn't um, had the success in, in London and in, uh, in, on Broadway that, that he believed it deserved and so he was excited about seeing a new, a new version of that come to light. And it was interesting having him around. He was not involved in the, um, in the production side of it but he would just come in and check. He would watch some rehearsals and be present. And mostly we saw him because Michael Crawford was making an album at the same time who uh, was be being music supervised by Mike Reed, who is a, a British music director who was working on Aspects. So we would have these times in rehearsal, we'd just be rehearsing the show, and everything would be sort of normal, and then all of a sudden Andrew Lloyd Webber and Michael Crawford are in the room, and it's just like this whole other thing. And this is when Phantom was at its height. So we would suddenly just go from we're rehearsing a play to, oh my God, we're under the microscope of this, this great artist. But he's always been remarkably supportive. He um, he always appreciated what an artist would bring to the roles. That the, you know, he really never felt like anything that he wrote on the page was you have to do it this way. It was no, no, no. Make it make sense. Make it truthful. And as challenging as the lines that he would write would be he would often say this is less important, this high note or this is less important than the emotional impact of the music. So it was actually, it was encouraging, it was very freeing to have the composer say to you, make that your, make, make truthfulness and honesty your, your, uh, your criteria in this. Um, the next time I really got to work with Andrew directly was on a musical he wrote called The Woman in White, which was a, was a hit in London, unfortunately was not as successful in, in New York. And I worked with him directly on the show uh, in, in New York, and we were making cuts in the show, and I had a private session with him and the rest of the team where we literally just went through and said, how do we take this section? I played the role of Sir Percival Glyde in the show. Um, which if, if, you're, uh, if you know the woman in white, uh, you, you would know that character well, but he's essentially someone who we think is a hero and turns out to be, be actually quite the opposite, one of the most despicable people on the planet, in fact. Um, and he, t he has a story that he tells at the beginning that's very um, uh, about what a, how generously he took care of this young girl. And so... We knew the show had to be shorter and we're looking for ways to cut it down and Andrew had a sense of how to move these melodies along and the beauty of it was I felt that he was trustful enough of that I in the room working with him I could say to him well this piece of information here I think we really need to have a longer musical phrase around and he was open to that and was very much okay great let's keep that one let's keep that and, you know, when you're looking at someone who's been knighted and here you are, you're a New York actor, you know, it, it was wonderful to know that he held his performers in that kind of regard and respect that he would listen and trust and allow you to collaborate on the material. Um, Andrew is, is enigmatic in his persona, in his personality, and I think he, he has a tendency because he's so successful and so powerful and you never quite know what he's going to say. Um, that he, he does make people nervous around him because he's, he's sort of otherworldly in that regard. It's, it was interesting, on two separate occasions I got to work with him uh, and then I also have worked with Tim Rice who was his most frequent writing partner who wrote, you know, uh, Evita and, and uh, Jesus Christ Superstar. Um, and Tim is entirely different from Andrew. Andrew is enig enigmatic and makes you a little bit nervous and Tim makes you completely at home. He's, he uh, is funny and gregarious, and uh, to give you a great example, Tim tells this story that uh, he says uh, people ask him all the time. Um, they say, "Oh, you know, 
why don't you work with Andrew anymore? You're, you're so successful. You're just, just marvelous. Everything you've done, you should do more. You should do more. And I say to them, well, well, would you like to work with someone who, who takes all of the money? Would you like to work with someone who takes all of the credit? Well, neither did Andrew. <laughs> Which is, that's Tim in a nutshell. They're both two incredible men in what they've created and what they've done. Um, and, the, you know, the other side of Andrew that's so fascinating is he's also, he's a real estate mogul. He owns all these theaters in London, too. So that makes him, you know, a powerful producer as well. You like, not unlike, you know, the Schuberts and the Nederlanders on our coast. Speaking of Andrew, when you think about Phantom and what the impact it, it's had, it's the most successful entertainment enter, enterprise, I think, of all time. It's, you know, been, it's played in more countries than any other show. It's been translated into more languages. Um, it's just a, a phenomenally su successful thing. There's a channeling that happens when you're an artist and you, you know, it's like you're taking dictation from God. And somehow God has done something very special with Andrew because he's created these melodies that are, they're eternal. They will live as long as humankind lives. Um, and that touch people in a way that, that nothing before or since has done. Uh, you know, you could compare it to La Boheme. You could compare it to melodies that you hear in La Boheme or things like that, that you hear them and you go, why is my heart leaping out of my body when I hear this? That happens when you hear the music in Phantom. And uh, it's, it's staggering to, to know that we live in a time when an artist like that exists. And to have been even a small part of working with him has been a huge honor and privilege for both of us. By the time I joined Phantom, the show had been running for 10 years and Andrew wasn't around. It was Hal Prince exclusively. And um, we just said hello to Andrew at the party in January and got to meet his lovely daughter and got to say hi to Sarah Brightman and that was really cool. But they, he was not a part of the rehearsal process or he was almost never there in my whole journey with Phantom. But Hal Prince, the director, was around all the time and would give us notes and hold rehearsals and tweak things and clean things up. And Hal Prince is very much like how you described Andrew in terms of always guiding us toward honesty and believability and yeah. finding the truth of the moments and in those characters' lives.